just a quick note, for those of you going mad that I'm only using one ratchet strap right now, I'm not picking the bike up. I'm just putting enough tension on the strap to support it so that it doesn't fall over and everything when I'm taking bits off. I'm not using just one strap to lift the bike up in the air. What I do have for that is these. These are, uh, these are the kinds of things you want to be using when you're lifting engines and bikes up into the air. Don't rely on a ratchet strap to go picking expensive things up. <laughs> like I said, this is just for support at the moment. These will be used for lifting the entire thing up in the air when I need to. Okay, so if you watched the previous video, you'll know that this pipe here, this big chrome silver one, that's just out of your view. Let me see if I can get that one. This one here, this is where your brake fluid goes out from the brake lever, okay? So it comes in via this braided cable here from the reservoir and it goes out via this big chrome one. So what we need to do is we need to disconnect both of these. Now, if you followed the last video, you will have already drained your rear brake fluid, but if you haven't, you're gonna to need to take note of that. Make sure you're wearing gloves and eye protection because you're gonna get fluid pouring out of here. Get a bucket underneath if you haven't drained the system yet and start taking these bolts off. So once we've removed the first union off of the top here, you won't actually be able to remove this bolt altogether until we've dropped the frame from the bike, until we've dropped the foot pegs from the bike, um, because otherwise you're just gonna go into the uh, clutch case here. So we're gonna move around to the other side and disconnect what we need to disconnect on that side, and then we can drop the, uh, the footboards like you saw me do in the previous video. Okay, so now the footboards are down off of the frame, we can take off the kill switch on the kickstand. That's what this is here. loosening the bolts that hold the forks on. I'm going to loosen up the indicator clamps here, the stock indicator clamps, because these are obviously rock solid and I'm not going to be able to get the forks out while these are on, so I'm going to slacken these up. Now if you've got standard forks or you're working on a different bike, don't go taking this cap off. <laughs> um, you want to check your user's manual because if this, if the end cap is actually part of the fork and the system within the fork, you're going to have a spring shooting out at you. So this is a stock set of springs here, stock set of suspension. So we can take this one off knowing that there's a stopper on the inside. And then the other nut that we need to remove is this one here. This front fork is giving us some trouble. It's not coming out. So. What I want to do is just encourage it to come out. I don't want to go smacking the hell out of it. But this here, this Allen key, or Torx wrench, bolt, whatever you want to call it, is the exact same size as the spring cap on the inside of the fork. An extension arm, half inch extension arm at the top. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hammer and I'm just going to tap it. I want the weight of the hammer to do the work. I don't want to go smacking it because I'll damage the inside of here. And I don't want to do that. All I want to do is use vibration to try and encourage it to come free. This bolt down here is completely removed. The headlight, uh, sorry, the uh, indicator light is detached. This I don't think has ever, ever been removed by the looks of it. It's rock solid. Um, it doesn't want to come out, so I just want to encourage it a little bit, and then hopefully I'll be able to twist it and get it out. There we go.
I'm really, really impressed with this crane. I think it was a really good purchase. I'm reassured now that I can take the weight off the front and the rear and the, the, the weight will be distributed to the center of the crane. One thing to remember, those top caps that are on the top of the forks, if they're stock, they are essential to locking that fork into place. You'll notice that they're actually a little bit wider than the fork tube. So when you put them on top, it clamps from the top down. Make sure that you're using those nuts that came out of them when you put everything back together. I'll be doing a video on this on a strip down of the forks because we're going to change the oils and probably look into changing the springs. Craig on the Suzuki forum on Facebook gave me some really good information and pointers in regards to making that front fork suspension better. So we'll do a little video on that as well and I'll share what the information is with you guys. The floorboards here that I had the, uh, the footboards, the weight that has come off of that, that, that frame that's back there, it weighs an absolute ton. So I'm probably not gonna put it back on the bike for the time being. Not sure if I'm gonna sell it. That's the kind of thing that is quite expensive to replace. And if I ever have problems with the new controls that I put on the front, it'd be good to know that I've got a second set. But I am thinking about putting slightly more for slightly more forward controls on the bike. So if anyone's got any recommendations on what to put on the front, um, I'm only five foot eight on a good day. Anyway, guys, that's it. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button, share the video, and I'll see you in part 12. All the best.